Welcome, and I'm pleased to be part of the Unique Antique Challenge, hosted by The Crafty Creech and co-hosted by First Rain Furniture. The idea is the piece has a vintage French provincial vibe. A while back, I did a challenge hosted by Sab's Rehabs where we had to transform a piece for $100. So that was tougher than it looked. Uh, I'm used to using my own products. So here's how it turned out. I had used some napkin decoupage. Not bad. I used some gold spray paint. Again, not bad. And it was just too pink in my estimation. <laughs> I just never loved it. So I started by peeling off that uh, decoupage, which was tougher than it looked because I had used glue to save money. Boy, it really stuck. <laughs> so now I'm kind of scheming how I'm going to replace that. I'm looking at a transfer called June, Ode to Henry Fletcher. I'm sure there's a story behind that. But I want to change up the color. So I'm looking at Dixie Belle's Dusty Blue. I plan on keeping some of the color that I already have, which is called Soft Pink. So I'm just kind of sliding that color sample underneath the transfer to see if I like it with that. And I've also chosen the Chintz Paint Inlay. So because I was having difficulty removing the napkin, I decided to just take the back off and use a scraper. That worked much better and I painted the back in dusty blue. I laid out my design for the chintz paint inlay and I get started. So the idea is you lay the, the sheets down in wet paint and then you use a rag to smooth out, a wet rag to smooth out the um, inlays. And then you let it dry. So while I let it dry, I turn my attention back to the piece and I'm going to uh, give it a little scuff sand and um, paint it in the dusty blue. So I have this little thing I put on my furniture when I'm working on it on my floor. It's just too big to move and it was already on my sales floor. So I'm using a detail brush and I put a coat of dusty blue on. Then I come back and look at my paint inlays. They're dry. And so I use a mister bottle and I mist them so that I can start to remove the paper. This is so exciting. I just love this beautiful, beautiful pattern on this paint inlay. But I found out that I did a few things wrong, but I was bound and determined that I was going to make this work. So I continue to wet the paper and I begin to lift up the piece. And I know you can't see right now, but I can see that nothing transferred. So I look a little farther, I don't see anything, so I lay the piece back down. Then I decide to look at another and still no, no luck there. And I wet the rest and look at a little bit more. So a little bit later I come back and what I did was I wet underneath. I pulled each page, page back and I thought, well, I'll mist underneath. It's just not wet enough. And that's what I did. And I let that sit a while. Back to the secretary, I remove the little hardware piece that's on the front so that I can apply that gorgeous transfer. So it's a four sheet set. So really it could go on a very large piece and all uh, be pieced together in quarters. But I decide that I'm gonna split it up a little bit. And I put the design that has the pot with the cherubs and the flowers on the front of the secretary. And I'm using that um, piece that I just took off, that um, lock key, a scutch and plate as my center mark, and line it up. 
and then begin to apply my transfer. It's kind of like measure twice, cut once. I want to make sure that I've got it in the right place. Transfers are so easy to apply and Iron Orchid Designs transfers are simply gorgeous. I'm just in love with them. <laughs> so they all come with a little stick and I know you've seen transfers being applied before but it's one of those satisfyingly pleasing things. Um, so if you haven't ever applied a transfer you just use that stick and just rub or burnish the sheet and just begin to peel it back and there you have it. It's gorgeous, right? So back to my uh, situation. I pulled it up again and discovered that it wasn't transferring. So I decide I don't have enough paint. So I continue to peel back layers and paint underneath using a generous amount of paint so that it's really wet underneath. I continue to do that half at a time, half a sheet at a time, and just lay the paper back down. These are a little pricey, so I just didn't want to ruin anything. So I completed that and came back about an hour later and misted the sheets so that they don't tear when you peel them off. And hope for the best. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Yay! It's a success. Isn't it gorgeous? Oh my heavens, I just love that. It looks beautiful on all colors. I love to see it on black as well. It's just beautiful. So I continue to remove all of the sheets and you just lay them with the paint side up. Also important to remember when you're adding them, make sure you put the paint side down. <laughs> so there's a little bit of a line between the sheets um, it's okay. I'm just going to distress it a little bit with some sandpaper. And then I spray it to seal it with um, just a, a regular uh, spray matte sealer. And wow, what a difference this makes, right? So I continue to paint out the rest of the piece. On the sides, my larger area here, I'm going to do sort of a blended uh, design. I do the top half and I do the bottom half, but I add back in some of the soft pink and the dusty blue. I want them both to be wet. So I'm using two separate brushes for the two colors. And then I come back in with a new brush called Big Daddy <laughs> from Dixie Belle and just kind of blend those colors together. Now I'm going over this really fast. You've s I've done videos on blending and so have lots of other uh, furniture painters but the idea is just in a very very light touch. Just keep moving back and forth using the mister and just moving that paint around until you don't see a line and, and until you're happy with what you see. People stress out about blending paint and it's really not that difficult. I used to stress out about it too, believe me. But um, just once you, once you do it a while then you know what you want to see and how to achieve it. So just keep going over it and adding color back in where you need it and um, go from there.
apply another piece of that transfer and where it would have met I kind of put it into that corner As you can see, I applied some bits that I cut apart of the inlay all around the drawers and also on the inside of the desk. I give everything a real light scuff sand just to kind of distress the transfer as well as the inlay. And here I go about to make another mistake. I start to put wax on everything which is fine it easily goes over the transfer but the paint inlays they started to smear a little bit and I suddenly realized that and then I remembered <laughs> what you have to do with the inlays is to spray it I remembered to do it on the back part but I didn't remember here so I just come back and give it a spray with that sealer the reason for that is because it is water-based the paint in the inlays is water-based so if you uh, put anything like a sealer or wax on it that's water-based it's going to reactivate the paint so that's why you want to seal it up before you do any other sealing with either a liquid sealer or with wax So I let that dry and then I resume my waxing again and all is well. I wipe the wax back a little bit and then I begin to apply some dark wax with a small brush. I'm using grunge gray and mainly I chose this color because of the gray tones in the flower pot on the transfer. So I'm just kind of going along any of my edges and lines and just kind of a little more in the corners and I get some underneath that desk where it's kind of or the insert where it's kind of in the shadows and I just continue to work my way around the desk and then I come back in and wipe back that wax I 
I continue the process all over the rest of the piece in the same manner. The reason for using the clear wax before you use the dark wax is so that the dark wax has something to sort of float on. Chalk paint is very porous, so if you just apply that dark wax on there right away, it's just going to grab right on to that paint and it'll be too harsh and you won't be happy. It'll look like a really dark line. It's like bad eyeliner. And the really nice thing about it too is if you get too much dark in one place you can go back over it with your clear wax and it acts as an eraser of sorts to, to bring back some of that color. Dark wax is magic. It takes this piece that might have been kind of juvenile with the pink and blue and it instantly adds that age and character and gives it importance. While you're enjoying the magic of the waxing, remember that if you like this content that you'll want to subscribe, as well as subscribe to our host and co-host uh, who brought you this collaboration. Also, small business owners need help sometimes, so if you would visit the Amazon wish list in my description box and if you would like any of the Dixie Belle paints that you see used that link will also be in the description box. I only sell Iron Orchid designs in my brick and mortar store at present. Oh and feel free to use the thank you uh, as well. The super thanks. Sure would thank you if you used it. Now I am using Suzanne's Garden Big Mama's Butter from Dixie Belle. It smells amazing. It smells like roses, which I think is appropriate to this piece. I'm conditioning the inside of the drawers and also using it on the drawer glides so that they uh, move in and out easily.
Remember the secretary before? I called it Big Pink. Have a look at it now. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram we're LaVintageDecor and on Facebook we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well!